So it's a little, it can be a little easier. But basically, if you have a 101 grant that has been renewed or that has terminated but you got another R01 grant, it will be fine. It doesn't have to be simultaneous. And then there are various attenuated circumstances, so to speak. There may be a giant foundation grant that would help. Also, it don't, it's not necessarily R01. We're m really f more oriented in general towards federal grants. So NSF is fine, although History shows that getting NSF grants in medical schools is rather difficult. They think that medical schools get enough support from NIH and are not very willing. Although, occasionally it happens, no, Steve? <laughs> but that's, the other is Department of Defense. DOD. DOD, DOD grants. Yeah. And sometimes the Department of Agriculture has a giant program which for some microbiology things come in. So, you know, nobody is really fixed completely. Part of it is history. There is this mainstream that I just mentioned, but there are also sort of, to speak, lateral ways of getting additional funds. But the best is to focus on fulfilling this criteria of having an NIH grant renewed or having a second NIH grant or NSF. That's the main line. Prem, did you want to add anything? No, I think that covers it. Uh, remember, the committees are on your side. They are trying to make the best case for you. And uh, if it's your responsibility to give some ammunition to them. Uh, because they're all your colleagues <laughs> sitting in a committee format. So basically, we're not trying to cut people from, promo from promotion. Actually, it's the opposite. We try, we often scratch below the surface trying to find something to, that helps. It's not always possible, but we try. OK, Hira? Well, you don't want it to terminate the moment you get promotion, okay? <laughs> That's basically as far as I, I would go. People look at it. But, you know, if you have two grants and the second grant is unlikely, yeah. if it's a typical five-year grant, it's unlikely that in the time to promotion you have accumulated two R01 grants, which one of which will, both of which will expire at the same time. Yeah. I will not worry too much about it, okay? It's in your best interest to come up for promotion when you still have some funding. So contact your chair if you think. Here you can always talk to me as I told you before, okay? <laughs> Bring your CV. <laughs> yeah, the question was is that does the committee need to see um, the number of years left, especially uh, number of years left in your R01 grants, especially if it's a second R01? Or uh, the, uh, the other way of putting it is that if your second R01 is going for computing renewal, is that going to be looked at as a negative on your um, you know, application to get promoted? And, and, and the, uh, the answer is generally no. By the time you've gotten a second R01, we feel that you are a pretty productive person. But I think that what the committee needs to see is actually that your first R01 is, is successfully renewed, right? That shows that you are a low-risk <laughs> person th that we can actually support you going forward. Yeah. Questions? You will certainly not get tenure if your number of years left on your grant is one or two years. Mm -hmm. Your time for tenure, is it typically uh, associated with um, promotion of associate professor or so the question is, um, when do you apply for tenure? Is it typically associated with when you are getting promoted to the associate <coughs> professor or full professor? The question relates to the majority of the other institutions is I think they go from during the associate professor with tenure, and what is it at Sinai? 
So, Leslie, you know you that, right? the answer to that? Right. Yeah. So, um, people are typically not promoted to associate professor with tenure in the investigator track. However, at any point during the time that they are associate professors, which can be up to nine years if you're not tenured, you can be proposed for tenure. Um, when you are promoted to professor or proposed for promotion to professor, if at that point your chair doesn't recommend you for tenure, the, the committee expects to see an explanation of why. <laughs> so one way or the other, tenure will be addressed at both the associate professor and professor level. Even when it's joint at the same time, the votes are separate for tenure mm -hmm. and for Good promotion. Mm -hmm. It used to create a lot of problems in the past, and we, about 10 years ago, I guess, disconnected the two mm -hmm. votes. Because the criteria are somewhat different. Right. So you can separately <laughs> get promoted to associate professor. Then you can be promoted, promote, asked to be promoted from associate professor with tenure. Right? It's not connected. It's not associate professor with tenure, right? So independently from associate professor without tenure, you can be a professor without tenure, and then can be put up for tenure, right? It's all disconnected, you know, not connected. Each, or it can happen, or it can happen simultaneously. If you have done fantastically well as an associate professor, uh, and then you're going up for tenure, I mean, kind of going for promotion at that point, the, then you can ask and the chair can ask for you to be promoted professor with tenure. So it can be either or. It's not necessarily disconnected, necessarily connected. Lego blocks. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the additional criteria for tenure then? Okay, so what would be the additional uh, criteria for, uh, for tenure in addition to what's listed here? Okay. So it's a little vague, but it depends in different tracks. But let's say investigator track, more funding and basically what's called the upward, upward trajectory in terms of funding, but also research, publications, quality of publications, number of publications, and service to the school, generating new courses, these sorts of things, although the last one probably is way somewhat less than the first two, namely publications, publication quality number, and uh, funding. There is no sharp line, basically. But Did you want to add anything? Yeah, I think, you know, at least in the tenure cases I have seen, uh, your productivity is the most important criteria. How well you have published and where you have published uh, is really number one criteria. And um, international recognition is something? Yeah, I mean, if you are... See, actually, I wanted to tell you uh, one, uh, give a small piece of advice. It's very difficult to keep track of the talks you gave during your career. You better note that down. I really don't have a list of all the talks I gave. And when I was being, <laughs> be, you know, I was being considered for position at Mount Sinai, the dean's office called me and said, give me a list of all the talks you gave. I had to scramble and think what <laughs> when what I did. And, uh, it's getting easier. You can Google it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I s yeah, yeah. I, I um I do second that, and the committee does look at your uh, national international uh, recognition, and so being invited uh, to give talks, uh, putting together a symposium, chairing a session, all of that. Even you might have invited presentations, but actually saying what you did in the presentations, whether you just gave a presentation or you're responsible for putting together a symposium you know, highlight all of that and put it together. In, in fact, in my CV, I have a section for every year what I've achieved. And every time I'm asked to give something, I put it in as accepted, you know, what I ha I'm going to be doing, and then move it up to what I have done, right? So that it's all that as soon as I get an invitation, I've accepted, I just put it down there in my CV, so it is there, right? like a placeholder, right? And then you say, what else did you do? And sometimes when I'm there giving a talk, they ask me to chair a session of that, right? Then I can say, okay, you know, Chair a session as well. So it is really keeping track of all your activities, right? The advice, uh, piece of advice is actually, you know, do the activities that's going to matter to your CV. Right? Don't be shy about asking people to invite you. That means travel. Yeah. We need it to that. These detailed records. I'm not talking about publications, but the 
detailed record of activities. We are talking about the period between the previous of, the, of your current appointment, not... Uh, no, no, it's complete, your career, everything. everything. The whole career development. Yeah. Also, the issue of recognition is somewhat murky because giving a ta talk, this and that, and people have different priorities. So a few years ago, we came up with a somewhat different formulation, at least for full professors, for international recognition, which is competitive in the international arena. And that can come from letters that people write about you. Yes, this is a question that's asked. So it's a little murky, but because, you know, that you're being offered, I don't know, directorship of the Max Planck Institute in Germany. Somebody says, yeah, this is recognition, but how do you put it on your CV as a, to point out that, it's, that you have this recognition? So yes, the, it's really being competitive, having offers of people thinking of giving you offers or pointing out in letters of recommendation that they think you are inter-competitive. Yeah. Okay, how does the maternity leave factor into the time that you have for up or out? So we, just so we recently um, introduced a stop clock option for faculty in the investigator track. And if you have certain significant life events which you think um, uh, are, are sort of taking you off course a little bit and you need a little bit more time to, especially in this up or out track, you can make a request to your chair for um, an extension, one year per child. And this is um, available to men and women. So um, birth, adoption, care of an ailing, parent. Um, again, a significant life event. That clarification is not just a maternity leave, it is a significant uh, you know, life event for both men and women. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, in evaluating uh, how well you have published, what, um, do you guys use the metrics? No. You know, what, what, what makes some record more impressive than others. Okay. Quantity. It versus quality, right. So in ev evaluating the publications, do you, how much do you look at numbers versus the quality? And how do you evaluate the, the, the uh, how do you evaluate the impact of your work? How does the committee evaluate the impact of the work? Uh, well, I can make some you comments. Can, okay. 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 So you can have 20 BBRC publications and nobody will care about it. Okay, you have five neuron cell science nature paper, you will be God. Okay, so that's sort of the extreme. Don't try to publish for numbers because it just doesn't work. People who sit on this committee know the quality of journals. Even basic scientists know the quality, let's say, of clinical journals. And when they see a paper in drama or blood, it's one thing. If they see something in a piddly society journal, you know, the trade journal, they don't care much about it. And what's more important, even if we don't know much about it, your reviewers do. And they will point out the quality of the journals and we, and the quality and the numbers. And reviewers are senior people. Yes, they are full tenured professors, essentially, around the country or around the world. They are not easy to fool. So they will say, this is not what it should be. And we take seriously what they say. So the impacts of the work actually gleaned, not just by the committee looking at your impact of the, 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 the journals that you publish in, but also how it has impacted the field by getting the letters from the leaders in the field, what they say about your work. Yep. Right? Very well said. Yeah. And senior author papers too. I mean, they're gonna. If you're a senior author, or, I mean, you're probably not even a first author for most most of us. A you know, final author on a paper or corresponding author is gonna carry more weight. So if you're good papers or senior author papers, you know, that's.
that's going to be more helpful too. Okay. Yes, here. This is associated with uh, publication of a very technical question. So I see book chapter as one of the criteria, which I haven't paid so much attention to. Uh, is that something uh, we should be uh, aiming to find such a copy or rather publication, typical academic publication? Right. So how does the, the committee review peer-reviewed publications versus invited uh, reviews versus book chapters? You know, what weight do they give to all of them? And as junior faculty, should you be putting your effort into writing book chapters at all? It's complicated. It's complicated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, as usual. As usual. <laughs> that's, that's my, my middle name. It's complicated. <laughs> so... It depends on the field. In basic sciences, I think, review chapters are not, in books, are not that important. There is one exception, and I would say there are theoretical papers which are written and that the field recognizes as important as being revolutionary, moving things forward. They can be book chapters, they can be review journals, journals which have massive discussion sections in uh, I f forgot which ones right now, but they basically send a paper and then you get 100 commentaries published that follow the paper, and this can be very influential. But the priority probably should be on the research papers in good journals. It just comes down to, right, if you have X amount of time, to write, to do work, to get funding? Do you put it on writing the peer review journal um, articles or just writing book chapters? Right. Having said that, one of the advice that I give you, I give the, the junior faculty is that writing review articles is a good thing to put your name on the field. Right. If you have made a fundamental contribution, a paper has come out that you have authored or co-authored, to claim that field it might make sense for you to actually write a review article to say how the work that you have just published on fits into the field. Right? In that way, there, the review article is good, and never wait for a journal to ask to write a review article. Just go soliciting the journal for a review article. You can ask them to do that. Right? So in that case, review articles are good. But, but book chapters is, is a lot of drain on time. And so unless you're re making a really important contribution to that book that's going to be referenced a lot, you have to figure out, you know, the amount of time that you put in and what you're going to get back. In the well, end. One thing you say is basically the favorite word that one says in these days, branding, okay? You branded yourself with the feet, you put <laughs> your label on it. Yeah. But in terms of theoretical and journal or other publications, what we were saying is sort of the traditional view of the biologists. People who work in more technical fields, in computer science, computer design, software, etc., they basically publish very few original papers. Their work gets published in proceedings of the conferences. They're often very competitive to get into, and even more competitive, even you present, to have it published. Fortunately, we have experts who can tell us, you know, how things work. You have basically everything we say here is sort of somewhat qualified. It's the best possible answer. It's like taking a GRE test, you're giving the best, <laughs> but you know yeah. it's not complete. Yeah. So if in doubt, please contact any one of us. Yeah. So you want to add <coughs> anything to it? No. Not not anything, Prem? No. no. Book chapters, yes or no? Oh, book chapters. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Book chapters are, you know, are less important at a junior level, but when you are going to the professorial level, how do you evaluate the leadership qualities of this person? If he has been invited to write books or edit books or edit uh, issues of journals that are review issues, that's a serious criteria. Yeah. No. 
Okay, so the question is about uh, what is, uh, how do you, um, how do you actually get the local, national, and international recognition? And the second thing is, um, how is it valued, evaluated, when you go from assistant associate professor level and the associate to full professor level? What is, does it matter? The, does the regional recognition matter? Uh, the national recognition, when does it matter? And when do you have to, uh, 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 have to uh, work towards getting an international recognition? So going to associate professor on investigator track, you need the national recognition, okay? It trumps, like in cards, you know, a 10, if you have an eight, uh, you don't have to have a nine, 10 trumps both of them. So having national recognition, that's what you need. Local recognition is not going to do much to you for this type of promotion, okay? The full professor, it's a little tricky because there are different levels of national recognition. Ultimately, you have, there has to be evidence that, the, that you are competitive on the international arena, whether in the letters or by documented by the fact that you've been invited to major international conferences as a presenter, not as an abstract or poster presenter, but as an invited presenter. So. Right. Regional in this particular track, uh, uh, local regional is not that important for right. promotion. Okay, really counts is, is, is the national. So, so in the um, investigator track, uh, it's mostly important for you to focus on national recognition. Local and regional is not that important as much as getting national recognition. Now, going from the associate to the full professor, we would like to see our professors to have international recognition, right? Naturally. But right now, you're thinking from going from assistant associate, you have to um, try towards having a national recognition. Yeah, it's different in clinical tracks. It's, it's diff yeah, different yeah. in clinical tracks for the investigator track, national recognition is what we So to the best of my knowledge, you know, the way it is judged is from the letters of recommendation that come from outside sources. The dean's letter very specifically asks them, especially it's a promotion to professorship. Is this person's work known nationally and internationally? And, you know, the, quite often the people who are writing these letters respond to that question. He is internationally well known or his work is, or her work is internationally well known. So th that's, an, a, that's the main criteria by which they go. Apart from going, I mean, talking in symposia and other things. If we don't, if nobody runs, writes about it, it's trouble. Yeah. <laughs> if in the recommendation it, letters they don't mention anything about, about your national, rec international recognition, then it is clear that you don't have one. So it is kind of, you know, that's how you get, you know, yeah, yeah. So just to explain what recognition means, so it's basically just giving talks in national conferences. And okay, Invite just, so, so what does the recognition mean? Right. How does the committee evaluate your national recognition? All right. By being invited to give presentations at conferences is obvious, yes? And it means invited, not voluntary. Let's say in neuroscience, everybody who submits an abstract gets to present a poster or talk, yes? That's not this is about. This is about invited talks, the symposia, nano symposia, these sorts of things. <laughs> Furthermore, but there are a lot of other things that are signs of recognition. Being a member of editorial board of, me, of important journal is another one. Being a member of a review panelist, NIH or uh, NSF or other in, in major philanthropic organization like the March of the Dimes, whatever, yes. Because the visits also are invited to be Yeah, sure. So, so, yeah. Not just in, but also in the yeah. department. Yeah. Uh, if you, yeah, whether you're visiting uh, in, uh, at other places, if you've been yeah. invited to, to give talks at other places within Absolutely. the country, that's going to be seen as, as, as a being recognized. Yeah. So there are lots of ways. Being a reviewer occasionally of a paper for a journal doesn't count for much, for obvious reasons. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, probably ad hoc reviewing for international NIH, grants or yeah. NIH grants. That's yeah. all. 
it's okay. Also, positions of, of authority in professional organizations. It's probably rare that people at the level of an assistant professor yeah. are fellows of a professional organization, but at the level of associate professor, being a fellow of AAAS or other organizations of this kind, yeah. certainly is a sign of recognition by the community. That counts for a lot. And in case of AAAS, it's an international organization, so it has, this is at its cachet. Right, so when you when you start, you know, trying to belong to societies and belong, you know, be part of the editorial boards and things, you have to be clear, careful about the time commitment that you're going to make. You know, you're not going to get the recognition, but also at the same time, what is it going to mean in terms of your time? So be careful in saying, oh, I have to be part of an editorial board, or it's like I'm going to be reviewing for this journal, and how much time you're going to be investing in doing that. So there are many ways in which you can get national, international recognition. So be careful about how much time you need to spend to get that, right? What is going to be the best time spent? Of course, getting invited to give talks is great, right? That's why I'm, I'm mentioning about, you know, organizing symposia. Put an effort into it, that's great. You know, you are the leader, you are organizing, you know, that's a recognition, national recognition, right? Being part of the society, uh, uh, presentations in society um, uh, conferences, whatever society you belong to, that's great. So, so be 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 um, careful about what you commit to, just just to get the recognition, right? In terms of how much time commitment you have, might have to to, to do for that. Yeah. Um, in thinking about documentation, uh, it, it says that one of the criteria is excellence in teaching in the investigator track. So, what's the most effective way to think about? recording that or, or you know, how do people present a case that they have excellence in teaching? So the question is about how do you, in your CV, you document excellence in teaching um, uh, to be evaluated by the committee? Well, basically each course is getting evaluated, as you know. Not every person in a course gets an evaluation. Often people don't want to do it people who run the course not to create tensions. But if you're getting negative evaluation, that will come through. So just then in more in clinical parts, you know, you have these teachers of the year award, all kinds of awards. But we also have uh, the institute <coughs> what is it? For called? medical That's education, for medical IMA, education. yeah. Steve yeah. actually you are a fellow no? Yeah, maybe the only basic science. I think you to do it. But uh, you can be a fellow or you can be a member, but they also tend to collect information. And that when it comes to teaching, it probably is worth visiting them and they will tell you, help you organize your teaching portfolio for presentation to the committee. Well, can I just, I mean, yeah, sure. so basically, we'll look at it, everything. So it, it's how many courses. You know, do you contribute to? Are you a course director? Do you lecture? How many hours do you lecture? All, you know, all those sorts of things contribute. There are teaching awards, but there aren't, like Claude said, very many, you know, for, for basic science people. And so it really kind of boils down to, you know, how many hours do you spend in the classroom and what... Um, and not getting know. negative. <laughs> well, I, you know, not... Evaluated. Nobody will know if you got a negative... Right. One of the we won't, as a, won't. <laughs> one of the ways <laughs> in which it, it will come out, yes. especially in the investigator track, is remember, Leslie mentioned about chair statement, right? And the chair statement has different components to it. We talk about, and we used to say that you have to be a star to be promoted at Sinai. This is S for scholarship, T for teaching, A for administration, and R for research. You don't have to excel in everything. Yeah. But those are the four points that in any of them you excel, that the chair statement can make the point there. And how is the chair going to say that you excel in, 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 in teaching is by, by, by looking at your teaching evaluations that a lot of students have actually said very many great things about your teaching. You know, that can be written up there and that, that's going to be transmitted then to the committee. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was head of curriculum committee for a bunch of years, and so t 
take it from me, nobody will know if you're a really crappy teacher. <laughs> okay. Curriculum committee might know, but unless you actually put it into your CV or have somebody put it into your letters, that you're really atrocious at teaching. Yeah. But the Probably. question is, you know, if you're an excellent teacher, how do you then, you yeah, know... Yeah, I know. It's the opposite. Yeah. How do you show it? How do you show it? It is a little bit harder. And, and um, Actually, I know at least one chairman who gets a lot of feedback from students. <laughs> so far, oh, bad. <laughs> especially bad. Yeah. 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 Especially. Students are much more likely to be critical than positive. Yeah. Well, there were a number of years also off, to off the topic where no actual... Um, course evaluations happened, and so it's it's a moving target. Yeah, yeah. So some of us are not actively teaching courses, but we have students, we have French students, and PhD students, how do we specify that? That's counted so, as So if you're not teaching but training, how do you then uh, document that you just as saying, training? You just list it. Yeah. But so do, you, do you list what you train those? Well, if they well, if if they are in your lab as graduate students working yeah, towards a the degree, you just say graduate right. students. Yes, the if they are postdocs the, the from your training, they are yeah. your postdocs. Yeah. Yes, you don't tell them that you teach them by petting or pulling electrodes, which would be my case. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, in, in um, do you have to graduate PhD student um, to to be considered to get to be promoted, or just having postdocs is it sufficient? Uh, is it a criteria? You don't, it's not a criteria. There's no criteria. But if you have both, you are a well-rounded person. Yes. Right. And, and don't forget so, so there are different it, kinds of students too. Yeah. So now we have master students. We have you have undergraduates in your lab. Yeah. So you know, yeah. Where do they go right. Yeah. Their there are um, there are institutions that I know that have the criterion that that unless you graduate a PhD student, you're not put up to promotion things like that. It is not so at Sinai. So we don't as long as you have any kind of trainee that you're trained and could be residents in a people you know uh, uh, master students. Um, uh, the SERP, uh, summer students, you know, you, there, there is a place where you list the trainees and what year, that year, years that, that have spent here in your lab that contribute, that is considered towards your teaching portfolio. Yeah. Following up on that, uh, should I list sort of your current position after they leave the lab? Uh, so they don't have to be current position after they leave the lab. Or highlight some successful career paths that right? so people that you have taken that year positive. Right. So, uh, so, so, does, uh, so when you have the trainee list, do you um, list only the years of training that you have been in the, your lab? Or you also have to list their current position, where they have moved on, and that shows the success of the training? Um, the more data, okay, so that's a question. Uh, the answer would be the more data you provide is better, but I don't think that is necessary. Having said that, training grants require that you put in the, the students that you have trained or P, the postdocs that you have trained where they've gone on if the postdoc or student has been on the training grant. So there is a CV, as, as uh, uh, Leslie pointed out, that, is that, that you have to full, uh, fill out for promotion, right? But you can make another CV for yourself and update with all information, including this, even if it is needed or not for Sinai CV, right? And, 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 and we'll come back to that, but one of the other things that I do in my CV, that's not a signing CV, my CV, what I do is in fact, under each of the publications, I write down if it has been uh, reviewed by news and re views reviews somewhere, if it has been how many times it has been cited, if it was recommended by Faculty 1000, all of that I write down underneath. The sort of, for me, myself, it's like the highlight, and it becomes very useful, not for promotion, but when you have to be considered for an award, right? So it is something that to be, you know, it's like proactive towards your, um, your own, uh, uh, you know, keeping track of your own successes. So coming back to your question as to do you have to list trainees on the Sinai CV where the trainees have gone, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Yeah. I think, I think that there 
maybe an opportunity to do you know, provide a grid for you. Yeah. And you just have to fill in each column. And I, I think that one of the columns may, in fact, be where your trainees have gone. Okay, does, does being on thesis committee uh, count as teaching or as service? It's service. service. It counts to a service, yeah. So let me make a comment at this point. I have been in multiple institutions. I was at the University of Pennsylvania and then Temple University and then I came here. In these other institutions, UPenn as well as Temple, there are very definite number of marks assigned, teaching, service, for all these promotions and tenure and research. Mount Sinai is somewhat more unique in the sense 75 to 80 percent of your marks go for your research productivity and grant funding. If you're an outstanding researcher, I think they pay very little attention as to how many hours you taught or how much service you have done. Keep yeah. that in mind. It's for the gray area. If you, yeah. If you learn it is not very, it's not a very fixed number for each category. It is there in other universities, but not here. Yeah. Here, if you land in graph, in terms of grants and publications, yeah. in a gray okay. area, people will look at it. Yeah. It's like. Okay, so we have five minutes left, and Hiro had his uh, hand up. <laughs> so this is. Right. Yeah. In the in the teaching category, but you know, how do you you know rec recognize the, the regional, national, international uh, recognition? Uh, how would you evaluate the recognition in, in in these various categories? I think it is mostly for the uh, clinician educator track. It becomes more important than the investigator track. You know, you do a few summer schools. You know, in Germany, France, Italy, it's international. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Especially yeah. if you go to Capri. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, how are um, multi-PI awards viewed? Or, or, or similarly, is there such a thing as starred first authorships? Do you okay. Okay, Com yeah. Shared? Yeah, so um, in, in terms of publications, how are the uh, uh, shared first author publications viewed? In terms of funding, how are the multi-PI grants viewed? I can answer. Yeah. Multi-PI grants are viewed as an individual grant to you. I know there are a lot of people who have program project grants. They have a project leader. You know, it's considered to be a equivalent to an R01. And start again, you know, people are very liberal in interpreting uh, in your favor. So if you are a second author but start as co-first author, you, you will be considered as a first author. Again, I'm telling you, the committees are on your side. All right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I can rephrase the question. It's like, does anyone go for promotion and don't get it? And if they don't, are they blacklisted for a while? Okay, so it's a little complicated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, we are trying when there is a deliberation, uh, and let's say you have you are in your fifth year, you don't have the up or out situation. We try not to vote, but contact the chair and tell the chair what you need to do. So, okay, let me repeat. If you are not at the limit, meaning you are in your sixth year as an assistant professor, we will not vote usually if it looks from the discussion that you're not going to get in past. What we'll do is we'll contact the chair and suggest that the procedure be suspended and that the chair tells you what you need to accomplish within 
the couple of years, let's say, that you still have. So that's one approach. And usually the chairs take it. Nobody basically on the committee wants to humiliate candidates and vote them down if it can be avoided, especially if there is a hope that something positive will come from the additional time. Okay. <coughs> However, if the vote is negative, which probably in the last 10 years has happened very few times, I, it's very... I have not seen one. What? Yeah, yeah. Five yeah. Years. It's very seldom actually the application will go to the full committee for voting if it is not going to be. Um, the very first ad hoc committee will tell the chair. If it is not going to be approved. So very seldom that will be. And they say it does not happen in the uh, 12, uh, 14 years I've been here. I have not seen one. No, I haven't. So, That's okay. so, right. But I haven't. But you know, Don't forget, you should have a mentoring committee that's working with you throughout your term or terms as an assistant professor. It's tracking your progress, telling you what you still need to do in order to get promoted. So you're not on an island by yourself. You have one or more people who are looking after you and can help you to pace yourself so that you're ready before you hit that maximum yeah. time at rank and so that you're prepared to submit a packet that's strong and will be accepted by the committee. So if you fall in between the cracks, which can happen, and somehow you get voted down, the chair can appeal and come and try to sort of argue on your behalf. But if the appeal gets turned down, then I think there's another year or so One year wait. wait period afterwards. So you may be already beyond the up or out. Okay, so that's the situation. But practically, I hope, I don't expect this to happen to anyone because of all the built-in protections. Okay, so in summary, so if you do get there, the you know, your packet actually does get voted down, the chair can appeal and you have one year period, right? But what we are recommending is that don't get there. <laughs> that right now there are a lot of steps that you can, you know, take, a lot of avenues that you can go, a lot of uh, resources that you can use to make sure that by the time you get your package ready, it is ready to be evaluated positively and to get promoted. Right? The final word, please read the faculty handbook, which is pretty good at describing the procedural criteria and these sorts of things. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Just be informed. Yeah. It's 5 o'clock. Uh, maybe one last question or no? Uh, no, no? Okay. All right. But if everyone's in the last, there's surveys. We want to hear from you. There's places for comments. And if a question didn't get answered, please write it in with your email. And we'll make sure that someone gets in contact with you. Okay. And with that, I'd like to though, thank the, the panel members for their um, active participation and for you guys for coming up with questions. And if you have more questions, please do... Um, write to me and or Elizabeth and Rod, and we will try to get you the, uh, the responses, answers. And more importantly, also, that if you have any ideas for the uh, programs that we need to put together from, from our office, please do let us know what you have in mind so we can actually help you guys um, get to the next level and beyond. All right? With that, thank you very much. <laughs>